Hi, hi, it's Mike. Um, in this video, we're going to have a little bit of a look at um, Azure Service Bus Relay and some of the headers we can use for authorization. So in this um, video, I'm going to extend the stuff we did in the last blog post with uh, Minecraft, calling through to Azure Service Bus Relay. Um, and I want to just share a few things I learned when I was chatting to Josh Twist and Santosh um, who work for Microsoft just for a little bit of help about the um, the service bus relay and I kind of learned a couple of things that I, I wasn't aware of already and I just wanted to share those because I don't think they've been um, discussed in, in any real detail on, on any blogs or articles I've seen so maybe they are but I haven't seen them so I thought it was worth sharing anyway so on the back end here we've got the same um, rest service I used in the Minecraft example and We've set this up with um, the web HTTP relay binding down here, and we've got the security enabled. So if you notice, that's commented out. And um, we've got our relay endpoint where we're going to open up this this um, login method. And you can see I've got my token down here for my, my listener. And the service itself, in the Minecraft example, we were using the authenticate method, but I also had this ping um, web get operation which was just letting me do a bit of troubleshooting when I was developing the solution so I'm going to use this one in this example and basically the implementation for this is going to call through and what I'm going to do is I've, I've changed what it did from the original scenario so I'm going to read the incoming headers and I'm just going to write to a string builder to include the value of the authorization header and the value of the service bus authorization header which are two different things and then the, the method's going to return that string and we'll be to have a look at what it says. So to start with, let's get this um, service up and running. And we'll open that up so it's listening on Relay while we, um, while we take a look at the client code. So that's listening now. So on the client side, in this um, sample here, we've got a really basic console app and if you take a look at the code here, I'm going to make three calls. So I'm going to call the relay with the authorization header, relay with a service bus authorization header, and then relay with both headers being used. And you can see I've got my um, my details for the, the relay here with my SAS key and SAS key name and, and the address. And if we take a quick look here, you can see I'm going to use the um, HTTP client. So we're going to use this... Um, sort of system.net.http assembly and, and do this really lightweight rest type call to the relay and I'm going to use a method called get sas token <clears throat> to get the token for calling the relay and you can see further down I've, I've just taken this code from one of the online samples so we're going to create the sas token with our resource URI set an expiry date and then just configure this string which service was uh, service bus will validate. And the difference between each of these three methods we're going to call is the first one is going to include the authorization header and populate the um, SAS token as the authorization header. And then we're going to make the call to service bus. The second one is going to use this different header called service bus authorization and we're going to set the SAS token to be that header instead. And then the third one is going to create um, a SAS token, and we're going to um, we're going to populate the service bus authorization header to be the SAS token, and the authorization header to be some custom string, which is something completely different. And the idea being, if um, if you were going to supply a second token, then you might you might have got your second token from some application specific authentication source and you could flow that through to your back end service whereas the the service bus token would be validated just at the service bus level so if we take a run through now of the sample and I'm going to very quickly just let that run straight through and you can see here with the results of this so when we call it with the service bus um, standard authorization header now the first thing is service bus strips out the the actual token so the token that it validated so it doesn't flow right through so you can see here we've got nothing um, returned as our response 
and when we call it with the um, service bus specific authorization header again there wasn't you know, a standard authorization header so that's fine but service bus really stripped out the the service bus specific authorization token anyway but know that the the calls did go right through to the back end service because they they wouldn't have authenticated against service bus to get through if we hadn't have supplied a token and then the final scenario was um calling service bus with both tokens and you can see the authorization header you can see it returned our value saying test token so we know that that value got right through to our custom code and we could have done something with it whereas again the service bus stripped off the the custom header and i think just to prove it what i'll quickly do i'll stick another method in and just rerun the sample again to um show what happens if we didn't supply a token and i guess um just to prove that that um, that is a valid scenario so I've quickly just popped a little bit of code in there and you can see we've now got another one called calling SB with no token and this method simply is the same as all the others I just haven't got that additional header being added so we'd expect this one to fail this time and I've just put a try catch around that to display the error message so if we run this through now you can see we've got the same as before but again when we've got calling SB with no token we get back the um, service bus response in the request contains no authorization header so we know that our back-end service is definitely secure and those tokens are validated so we can see that's a that's a pretty good all-round scenario um so hopefully this video was useful quite a short one today but it just kind of digs a little bit deeper on some of the options available when you're using service bus relay with um wcf rest as the back end and you want to supply some security tokens. Thanks.